Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to take a deep dive back into the world of house hacking, but this time we're focusing on buying a two to four unit properties using Fannie Mae conventional financing. So you might be wondering why owner occupied units? Well, that's what we're gonna be exploring today because house hacking is all about buying a property, living in part of it, and then renting out the rest to help you cover your mortgage payment. It's a really powerful strategy, especially in a market where interest rates are a bit higher. When you think about house hacking, you might picture buying a single family property and renting out rooms, but that means you have roommates and that's not quite the same thing as being a homeowner. When you buy a two to four unit property, you get to live in one of the units and then rent out the others. This way your tenants are helping you make your mortgage payment. It's a brilliant strategy, especially when interest rates are higher because someone else is paying half of your mortgage and your effective interest rate is about half of what it says on paper. Now there are differences between each loan program and that's why I'm breaking this down by agency. So last time we talked about FHA guidelines, which are more flexible for buying a two to four unit property. Today, we're focusing on Fannie Mae conventional loans, which have different requirements, especially when it comes to down payment. So we'll be covering loan program types, loan to values or down payment requirements, minimum credit score requirements, rules around non-occupant and co-borrowers, reserve requirements and rules around accessory dwelling units or ADUs. We'll also discuss whether you can use rents to qualify for the loan. So let's get started. With Fannie Mae, you can use a fixed rate mortgage or an adjustable rate mortgage that's fixed for five or more years. So you can use these for owner occupied properties or with the Home Ready program, which is Fannie Mae's affordable housing program. So you can also use it on Fannie Mae's conventional loan to buy an investment property. But today we're gonna focus on owner occupied properties. So let's talk about loan to value or LTV. So this is how much you're borrowing compared to what the property is worth. So with Fannie Mae, for a two unit property, the maximum loan to value is 85%. For a three to four unit property, it's 75%. So what does that mean in terms of down payment? Well, with Fannie Mae mortgages, you'll need to put down 15% for a two unit property and 25% for a three to four unit property. But if you're putting down less than 20%, you'll need to contribute at least 5% from your own funds. Next, let's talk about credit scores. So the minimum credit score for a Fannie Mae loan is generally 620, but it can be really challenging to get approved for a multifamily property with a score under 680. So if you're struggling with this, don't worry, FHA loans might be a better fit for you as they have more flexible guidelines with regards to credit scores. If you're planning to have a non-occupying co-borrower, so essentially someone who's helping you qualify for the loan but won't be living in the property, that's allowed with Fannie Mae. So this person will be on the loan application, providing their income, assets, and credit score, but they won't be living in any of the units. Reserve requirements are another important aspect to consider. So these are determined by the automated underwriting system based off of the risk assessment of the loan. So most conventional loans will have a reserve requirement, especially for multi-unit properties. And this is because you're essentially becoming a landlord and you need to be prepared for potential issues like tenants not paying on time or needing to make repairs. Accessory dwelling units or ADUs are not allowed with Fannie Mae. So if you're buying a two to four unit property, make sure to keep that in mind. These are separate units on the property, like a small house in the backyard or a pool house. However, Freddie Mac does allow ADUs up to three units. So that might be a better option if you're interested in this type of property. Can you use rents to qualify for a Fannie Mae loan? Yes, yes you can. You can use a percentage of the rents from a non-owner occupied unit as income for your debt to income ratios. Typically this number is 75%. So 75% of whatever the rents are can be used to help you qualify for a mortgage. As you can see, there's a lot to consider when it comes to house hacking with Fannie Mae loans and it's important to work with an experienced mortgage professional who can help guide you through the process and help you understand all of your options. That's why I created this channel and I love helping homeowners like you achieve their homeownership dreams. In the coming weeks, we'll be covering Freddie Mac conventional FHA VA loans for veterans and USDA loans as well, and how to house hack using those programs. So make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of those videos. If you're in the market right now, congratulations, you're making a smart move 
especially if you're considering a two, three, or four unit property. Your renters will help you pay your mortgage, which is a huge advantage. So take the plunge and let's make your homeownership dreams come true together. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you want to dive deeper into this topic, click the link in the description to read the full article. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm here to help and I'll see you in the next video.